Good morning guys and welcome to the show. Fernando. Welcome to the show. Today we have, what kind of car do we have? Toyota, Toyota Corolla. We have a Toyota Corolla, like he said. This is a car that you guys are gonna just love because, well, the installation was done like crap. And that means we get to tear it all out and start over. But this brings up an interesting point, Fernando. Mm -hmm. Stop moving for a second. We call these 911s. Yeah. I really feel they should be called something else. Why? I don't know. I mean, it's easy. People get the gist of it. Like, hey, it's an emergency. Not really. I feel like we should call them something else. How do you feel about that? I like 911. You like 911? Yeah. Well, if you guys have a different name that you'd like us to call them other than 911s, let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, we'll just keep calling them 911s. And, well, let's get to it. Let's get to the rescue. Let's see what's going on in this thing. Anytime you start one of these, the first thing you want to do is head up underneath the hood and disconnect the power wire because you're going to be working in the back doing all kinds of fun and excitement. As you're pulling stuff apart, you might not be thinking about neatness or anything. You just want to get the garbage out of the car. Underneath the hood here, we have the fuse holder that is a zip tied to a relay. And then we have all these little red wires here. I don't know what this is. This is There's no fuse on any of this, so that's bizarre. We've got a lot of zip ties going on in here. Uh -huh. This feels like this feels like CCA. Bro, oh, totally CCA. It feels totally. I, and I know what you're thinking. How can you tell the difference between what CCA and copper feels like just by squeezing the wire? I've felt enough CCA wire to know what it feels mm -hmm. like. It just has this feeling to it that. Oh, I wonder if it'll just pull out. I bet you it pulls out. I bet you it pulls out. Oh no. Eh? Is it? Is it? Oh. No, no, no it's a like, good crimp. It's a, I mean, it's not a great crimp, but it's, it's not in a great crimp, well. but you still, you still mm -hmm. we have plenty, plenty wire outside. You really don't want to do a crimp like this. Mm -hmm. Ah! Ha! That was funny. With the power wire disconnected, now we're free to do whatever we need to to get the amount of stuff that's in here out. Now, not all these 911s are like total straight up emergencies. Some of them are just, they don't like the way they're installed and they would like it installed better. And some of them, if you guys have seen in the past, are straight up like it's amazing the car's still on the road and hasn't burst into flames. I don't know. You guys have to rate what you think as far as the necessary evil between what's good, bad, and indifferent. This one, He's got a bunch of, well, let me just show you. One of the first things we do after disconnecting the battery is pull the back seat out so we can see all the wiring that is underneath it. And this one, of course, is not gonna disappoint. You have a whole bunch of stuff going on here. This one in particular, this scenario right here is the one that I don't like. And this is why I tell people not to run the wires underneath the seats. It just gets melted into this goo. The seat sits on it. All that pressure from the seat is smashing down into these wires. Have your power wire just chilling out over there. And look at this. A bunch of goo on that where that's getting smashed into the bottom of the car from the seat sitting on top of it. it didn't come through the panel right. And that's oh, just did. smashed down on it that's like oh and then we fold the seats down okay mount under the back of the seats it's really not the best place for it but don't get me wrong over the years and years of doing this i've mounted plenty of amps to the back of seats it's just not something i do anymore but i always like this cutting the holes and trying to hide you know what what is all this and then that is that screwed down no so there's your power distribution, not screwed down. Grounded to the seat frame rail right there. Mm -hmm. Looks like they actually scraped the paint away. Yeah, probably. All this is located right here at the hinge of the seat. Mm -hmm. This stuff has to move. Yeah. You know, power wire isn't supposed to move. Like there's no place in your car other than the boot. And if maybe here that power wire moves, it's not made to move. And even in the boot, it is specifically designed that way. This is definitely not specifically designed to move. I like this. Oh yeah, that's the um, T-Spec. I like that one. Yes. It's like dual power. Yes. So where is the uh, the jumper between here and here? It's on the input. It's in here? Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the T-Spec. That's pretty cool. That's I pretty like that one. Yep. I like it. They make a two and a four, I think. Oh, it looks like there's screws rolling around like it was originally screwed to that cardboard cover there. Yeah, right here. Because right here. the car moves and the wire moves, it probably pulled itself free. Good stuff. 
The first step is to pull all of this out. We're gonna pull every piece of wire out of this car. We're gonna pull the rear deck out. We're gonna pull the doors off. We're gonna go to every single facet of this, except for the one thing we don't have to rewire is the radio. And the reason for that is we actually installed the radio. That's why it's back having us fix all this stuff now because after having the conversation with him about everything else, he was like, yeah, I need to just start over, which is cool. We will be pulling the radio out, but not for the purpose of fixing anything behind it. Let's get going, unscrewing these wires and start digging into the mystery of what this car has. The rear deck are a nice set of jail audios. You guessed it, right here. There's a giant gap. There's no screw there. This is what we call the three screw option. The wire is just kind of like snaked up and around and down and just doing what it does. It's another right here. Oh yeah, that looks like maybe they had a high level to low level at one point or they just felt like they needed to rerun their wires. Yeah, there's another one right here. What is that hooked up to? This one goes to, I have no idea. This one, as you can see, we got some self tappers at strange angles, just holding this in. And the problem with doing this, put a screw in it like this angle with a big head like that you could actually tear the surround of the speaker and yep there's your no screw on this end they make brackets for this is the factory screw hole here one of the problems he was having with the rear speakers as you could see the wiring was not done properly through the bars these move and they were just kind of draping over it. And on this side, they actually went between it here and were getting pulled every time he'd open and close the trunk. This wasn't coming out because there was a piece of sound treatment right here holding this wire in place. These weren't even hooked up to anything. They were just chilling out back here. That's why cutters are your friend when disassembling a car like this. There's a point during every single one of these where you just kind of scratch your head and go, what happened? What was the thought process here? The corner of the car here, this is the glove box where the RCAs all converge and manage to go into behind the radio. This is kind of weird. So there's three RCAs. The gold RCA here goes up and around this power harness in the back here and up in above the air conditioner and into the, the dash. Blue one here, I, I don't know where this one goes, but it, it kind of disappears up into the dash over in here and it feels like it goes above the airbag to get into it and then there's this gray one that goes off in that direction so all three RCA's are going in a different direction to get to the head unit I don't know why you would do that it doesn't make any sense I mean I could see it making sense if you were doing two different things like you did like a sub amp and then you came back and did the high amp. that's a possibility I guess and that's what I'm saying. It's one of those times where you go, I wonder what was going on during this. That's kind of weird. Whatever. Pulled off the side panel and sure enough, here's here's the blue one. And then here's that gray one going up into above the dash. This one comes through this area here and this one comes through that area. We're also concerned with the fact that the boot is not in place. That ought to be neat. And then I have this silver wire here that seems to be going into the boot. Fernando asked me to come look on his side. Ooh. Really? Like, this is the screw cover and it apparently broke, so there's just a big ball of strip caulk in there. We'll have to, oh yeah, you can smell it. We're gonna have to pull that out. To you get know, to I mean, our you screw. don't have to put like two pounds of. Don't want it to fall out, man. Uh, With the door panel off, we can get a better idea of what's going on. Here's the boot. Wire just pulled through it. Pretty sure water's getting into the car here. That's wonderful. The speaker is mounted to the existing factory speaker. They just pulled that out. I'll show you what I mean. Three screws, drywall, pull it out. No terminals on the speaker itself. They're just wires twisted in. These are some more JL C1s. This wire just randomly goes into here. And then this is the wire that is run into the door. 
we'll have to fix the boot. Go in and just pull this wire all the way out. What we have, you can see where the metal from the boot has been rubbing on this and will eventually just cut through it. Actually, it has already cut through it. One is cut through and the wire is exposed. So this was shorting out in the door already. If it wasn't, the only thing stopping it was the paint open wiring right there. And this is crappy copper wire. You can already see where it's corroding in the harness. Not all copper wire is created equal, guys. And yeah, you already have the green corrosion going on in here. To get these speakers out, you just have to drill the rivets and Metra does make an adapter that allows you to put a, the right speaker in the door and not have to destroy this. Now that factory speaker is gone. If you ever did want to sell this car, put it back to factory or anything along those lines, he ain't doing it. Fernando thinks he's figured out why they ran their own wiring into it and had such a disastrous response. And that has to do with the Toyota Tweeter. It's a jumper. Let me show you what I mean. So when you have this harness here that is for the factory Tweeter or the factory mid-range up in the dash, you'll see the four wires. How it works, inside of this is a jumper. There's a parallel here and a parallel here. So it comes in, goes to the Tweeter and loops out back down to the mid-range down there. If you don't hook this back up or properly install your tweeter then that wire has no sound the tweeter wire will his thought is that this wasn't connected and that was causing the issue and that's why they decided to tear it all apart and run all new wiring instead of figuring out why it just didn't work in the first place right. this door is done the same way just has random wiring ran and the speakers mm -hmm. screwed right. up and yeah, more more pinched copper yay a lot of times when we're done with something like this, it's a mess, there's zip ties everywhere, random screws. Hitting the car up with a quick vacuum just to get the debris out is a great idea. We got everything out? So this is what we call the zero point. We've taken everything out of the car. We know what we're dealing with now. Mm -hmm. 